Hi there, Sarah Rose here, and I just wanted to pop in with a little mini training today on how to manage the shifting relationships that start to change when you step on to the awakened path. So I was asked yesterday in the private Facebook community for the Calling and Censored podcast, how do you manage the relationships that are starting to change as you start to change when you step on to the conscious path or the path of awakening? And this is a really good question because I also get this question from my Evolve students. So when you wake up or you're quote unquote awakened and you step onto the path, what that means is you're consciously rising your um, to higher levels of perception. You are more conscious with your day-to-day -day activities. Basically, that's what the spiritual awakening process is. You become more conscious. And the unconscious patterns that usually were falling under your radar start to rise to the surface so you can heal and release the ones that are no longer serving you. And as a result of this, your patterns and your tastes and your preferences are going to shift and change. And this is a good thing. So as you raise your vibration, you raise your consciousness, and you raise your level of awareness and perception, you're going to choose different things that are more in alignment with what resonates for, for you. And you're going to be more and more alignment with your soul and with your higher self. You're going to be peeling away layers of ego throughout this process. And so you'll notice that some things that you used to really enjoy no longer fit you. And this can be places, circumstances, people, foods. You know, you're going to notice also that you become more sensitive, more sensitive to chemicals, more sensitive to toxins. You know, you start to take a real interest in the things that you put into your body and not just physically, but also mentally, emotionally, and energetically. So especially at the beginning of the spiritually awakened path, you tend to safeguard your your energy body a little bit more until you're able to find a solid ground and footing and really feel confident within your own energy before you start to mix and mingle and, and go out into the real world with a lot of other people where you could feel very vulnerable. So it's very common that you'll even go into hermit mode a little bit during the spiritual awakened process. So what this means is a lot of people will sometimes feel a little lonely or a little isolated because you're going through such a shift where literally everything in your world is changing and even the way you perceive yourself and the way you perceive the world in general is shifting and you don't you haven't connected to your tribe yet necessarily so a lot of people especially people close to you might not get you and so this can tend to feel a little lonely or a little isolated at times but it's also a welcomed isolation at times as well because you sometimes just choose to go inward and stay within your own energy and self-reflect and really tune into yourself. So that can go in phases. But what you'll notice is the relationships that you have will start to change. Now this is, I could talk about this uh, topic on multiple videos and I'll probably have to do that. But today I'm going to keep the video specific on how to manage the shifting of relationships once you step onto the path because a lot of relationships will be triggering you or wanting a lot of people in your life will be wanting to hold you to the person you used to be and so this is the part that I want to address today people will want to hold you to their expectation of you and so as you're evolving and as you're changing, you might run into people in your day-to-day -day life that still have a certain perception of you and they're not necessarily willing to see you differently, although you know inside that you have completely shifted and changed. And I wanted to address this because this is really important to understand that your growth scares people that have not yet woken up to the path and started to really self-reflect and go in and really start to transform their life or or awaken so to speak right so your growth basically what that does is it puts a big mirror in front of them which forces them to look at their growth process and or lack thereof growth process and that can be really scary because the ego really wants to keep you stuck. It really wants to keep you in your existing story, your existing bubble, what's familiar for you. And so the people in your life are going to try to do the same when they when they notice that you start to shift shift and evolve, you might notice especially people close to you 
wanting to keep you stuck in the past, wanting to keep the old perception of you as the reality, even though you are shifting. Okay, so recognize that that's what's happening and that what you can do in this situation is approach it with complete compassion for yourself and compassion for the other person along with non-judgment because recognize everybody is on their own journey and everybody is at the perfect place for them and if they're not opening up to the same perceptions and the same level of awareness as you that's perfectly fine that's exactly where they're supposed to be the best thing you can do is shine your own light it's actually the only real thing you can do and by shining your own light and being the example and not worrying so much about what other people People think and just moving forward with your own growth process and your own evolution and shining your own light from within what that does is it helps give permission to other people to do the same in your world it may scare them at first but the ones that are meant to recognize the light within you that is growing are going to recognize it and it's going to help pull them up you, your energy can influence other people's energy also, keep in mind, I just wanted to say that it's perfectly okay to say no. To say, no, I don't want to go do this. This doesn't feel right for me. Maybe, for example, you no longer want to go to the bar. Now you'd rather meet your friends for lunch instead of going to happy hour because it doesn't vibe with you as much anymore to be drinking or to be in that bar environment or be around cigarette smoke or maybe the music's too loud for you because you do become, again, more sensitive to chemicals, sounds, light even. You know, you become more sensitive as you start to open up. And so maybe you still, your, your, your situations, your relationships shift, but it just changes. They don't have to be completely out of your life, but maybe what you do changes. Maybe now you meet them for lunch instead of going to happy hour because it doesn't resonate with you. This is where setting your boundaries becomes very, very important during this process because as you align with what feels true to you, you're going to be challenged to uphold those boundaries, especially when people in your environment who are used to you being a certain way, they're going to challenge those boundaries because they're still going to be holding you to the old to the old version of you that you're growing out of. Does that make sense? I hope this is making sense. If you're resonating with this, please leave your comments below the video, whether you're watching this on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, wherever you happen to be watching this. So does this make sense? That if someone's holding you to the old version of you and you're starting to shift and you're starting to make new choices, that your boundaries are going to be very, very important for you in order to uphold your truth unwaveringly and respect yourself and honor yourself and make the most self-honoring choices for yourself. And people that respect those boundaries are going to respect those boundaries. And it's the people that don't respect those boundaries won't respect those boundaries. And it's typically the people that don't respect their own boundaries are not going to respect your boundaries. So again, non-judgment and compassion for yourself and others because everybody is just at their own growth phase and they're exactly where they need to be. So recognize that if there are people showing up in your life that are challenging your boundaries or you're saying yes to things that you really would rather be saying no to or you're saying no to things that you'd really rather be saying yes to, this is an opportunity for you to level up and really draw a line in the sand with what your true values are and start acting from that. Start really truly honoring your own boundaries. The right people are going to gravitate towards you and as you grow and evolve, you will attract a whole new tribe of people that are resonating at the same vibration as you. And that's really important to know, but there is this phase in the spiritual awakening process sometimes where you feel like you're sort of in no man's land. You're a little bit in limbo where the people that you were hanging out with no longer resonate or the places or the activities or the events or whatever. They're not really resonating with you anymore, but at the same time, you really haven't found your new tribe. You haven't really been at it long enough to really you might not even really be out of the spiritual closet yet, right? So you might not be out there in the community and networking and meeting other spiritual people and things like that. And so oftentimes you can be in this little, you know, period of time where you um, 
feel like all of your relationships could be disintegrating around you because nobody gets you, but rest assured that you will find other people on the path and they will start to gravitate towards you. You will start to gravitate towards your soul family. Um, this is really important to understand. And also honor the time that you do have to yourself. So the hermit mode, the wanting to go inward, the wanting to be still or the wanting to be in silence, these are very important integration periods for you to integrate and really get to know yourself, integrate wisdom into your life um, through self-reflection and really get to know who you are at a core level and tap into that. And so honor that space protect that space and know that anybody that's meant to be in your life will be. But the number one takeaway from this is always approach it with compassion and non-judgment for yourself and others, recognizing that everybody is where they're supposed to be and that the fact that some people may be challenging you or triggering you um, and falling out of your experience is a natural side effect of you shifting, changing, and elevating your perceptions and your vibration and things like that. So that's a natural thing. You know, it would be a, if you weren't shift, shifting on the physical level to new experiences and new preferences and new groups of people and things like that, that would mean that you're not really changing your inner rea reality at all. And so you can expect that this is just a natural byproduct of you up leveling. So I hope this finds you well, and if you liked this, leave your comment below. I'd love to hear if this resonated with you. And if you are interested in hopping on a free coaching call, I offer that every single month. You can find that at sarah-rose.net. Um, you can also check out Evolve, which is my ongoing spiritual mentorship program. If that interests you and you would like support and mentorship on your Ascension journey, then check out the URL for that as well. And you can find all of that at sarah-rose.net, which is my website. And I hope this video finds you well. Namaste.